is Law for Community Workers Spotlight On, the shortcut series podcast for community and health workers produced by Legal Aid New South Wales. My name is Pauline and I'm from the Community Legal Education Branch here in Legal Aid and we would like to acknowledge that our podcast is recorded on Aboriginal land and pay respects to elders past and present and extend that respect to any First Nations listeners joining us today. Always was, always will be. Today, our guest is Tara, and we're shining the spotlight on Australia's Animal Defenders Office. Welcome to the podcast, Tara. It's lovely to have you here. Oh, hello, Pauline. Thanks so much for having me on the podcast, Uh, and thanks for that lovely introduction. So I'm the co-founder and volunteer managing solicitor for the Animal Defenders Office, or the ADO, Uh, And we're a community legal centre that specialises in animal law, or to put it another way, you know, uh, legal problems that people have involving animals. And we're run entirely by volunteers, and I'm I'm actually the only full-time volunteer, so I generally do a bit of everything, including being principal lawyer, uh, office manager, communications person, volunteer coordinator, running our community stalls, and if I really can't avoid it, making feeble attempts to manage the financial side of things as well. Uh, (laughs) uh, You know what they say about lawyers and numbers, we don't really go together, but anyway... So what I like most about the job is pretty much everything and I kind of think I'd have to because to be doing this as a full-time volunteer, you'd have to like a lot about it. But perhaps the two things I could mention that I really like are providing a service that helps so many different species um, of what would you call them, maybe our quasi-clients. And on our actual clients, the humans, it's really fulfilling helping people who care about animals because Often the people who end up at our service are really desperate. They've tried everywhere else and have been unable to find help. Uh, Sometimes it can be that nobody's listened because the problem is about animals and, you know, for some animals don't count. Mm. Or services just don't have that subject matter knowledge to be able to help. So when they get to us and we listen to their situation and empathise and try to help, they're really grateful and relieved. And so that's uh, certainly a fulfilling aspect of my role. Oh, wonderful. And yeah, animals are an important part of people's lives. They're a part of our families. They're a part of our networks and supports. Exactly. They play a very important role. Yeah, and that'll probably be a theme of this podcast today. So then, Tara, what service exactly does the ADO provide? And I mean, do you even have what we would call a typical matter for your team? Our volunteers provide pretty much the full range of legal services. So we provide legal advice and we undertake, you know, your typical legal tasks, writing letters or, you know, contacting councils, etc. We also provide legal representation in courts, tribunals, and uh, recently we've been doing a bit of mediation as well. Uh, We engage in law reform activities, so that's, you know, we write submissions to public inquiries, we speak at public forums, we give evidence at parliamentary hearings Mm. and so on. We also do uh, community legal education. Typical matters would include uh, consumer law cases involving, say, a sick puppy or a sick kitten bought from usually unscrupulous breeders. Mm. Uh, And then there's the whole issue of, you know, purchasing products that perhaps may breach Australian consumer law. Unfortunately, animals are regarded as property under our legal system. Mm. So it's just the typical consumer law case uh, involving purchasing goods. But also on a sort of different area of the law, we uh, will challenge government decisions to take away or destroy family pets. As you've already mentioned, Pauline, family pets can be members of the family. So when these animals are seized and taken away, it can be extremely distressing for the Mm. carers of those animals. And often because they then have no idea of the process, what's happening, and they have nowhere to turn if, you know, other services just can't help them with that particular issue. Another sort of typical government decision will be to harm wildlife. Uh, So that's, of course, animals who aren't owned by anyone in the ordinary sense of the term. But, you know, there are people and organisations out there who care a lot for the for the wildlife in their sort of part of the world. We also help people set up animal protection organisations or animal sanctuaries. We call that our happy work. Mm -hmm. We help uh, foster carers who run into difficulties with council bylaws, you know, regarding the number of animals that you can keep. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, we help reunite people with their animals. Uh, this could include, for example, people in a domestic violence situation where the perpetrator has kept the victim survivor's animal or is threatening to come and take that animal. That can be a particularly fraught situation. Mm. We also defend animal activists who find themselves caught up in the criminal justice system or animal advocates who are sued for defamation for speaking out against animal abuse. We're seeing that more and more as defamation is sort of being weaponised by animal industries. And finally, on the law reform side of things, we help people with their submissions to inquiries or in drafting parliamentary petitions. For example, we did that recently for an organisation trying to change laws to Mm. mandate shade for farmed animals kept outdoors. You know, that typical Australian scene of the, the, you know, herd of cows huddling under the one tree in the paddock, you know, on a sort of a, a very hot day. And uh, some of our recent law reform initiatives that, we are, that we're involved in or have been involved in recently include objecting to rodeos held on council land in New South Wales and then across the border also trying to phase out native duck hunting in Victoria. So that's just a random sample of some of the things that we, we get involved in. Wow, that's a really impressive resume for, for a small service. Normally on Spotlight On, we would ask about target clients and things, but you you don't really have what we would call target clients. But would you then just talk to us about eligibilities to access the service? Yeah, the only uh, basic eligibility to access our service is uh, that the matter must at some point, somewhere along the line, involve either animal welfare or animal advocacy. Mm. And apart from that, we're open to anyone and from anywhere in Australia The majority of our clients are in New South Wales and the ACT, but if it's a matter that we want to look into and we have capacity, Mm. uh, we'll take the matter on wherever the client is. So um, even recently we've had a few cases from Tasmania and also the Northern Territory, so literally from from the bottom to the top of the continent. How can people access the Animal Defenders Office then? The best way to access our service would be, I would suggest to send us an email. It's all, I'm sure as lawyers, we always like to get a bit of a sort of heads up <laughs> as to the, the issue that we're dealing mm. with. Or uh, anyone wanting to access our service can go to our website and on the contact page is an online form. That That's also a great way. And you can, people are also welcome to call us, but we don't usually provide advice on the spot just because we're probably doing other things, but you might be lucky. Uh, And for those in the ACT and surrounding regions, we also have an office. So you can, um, in the CBD, as much as we have one in Canberra, uh, so you can make an appointment to come in for a face-to-face meeting. Well, that's wonderful. Does the ADO present training sessions uh, to services or to community groups? I imagine you would speak at conferences as well, though. Yeah, certainly. Uh, The ADO presents at all kinds of sort of training sessions and meetings and events. So sometimes an organisation like the local legal aid office, the legal aid office here in the ACT, or, or for example, just a community organisation like the Rotary Club will ask us to give a presentation about what we do, sort of for legal aid. It was an introduction to animal law. Uh, But we also present at conferences uh, and pretty much, you know, conferences across the spectrum. So from academics to activists, and we also do online presentations and participate in panel forums and the like. Excellent. So where can people keep up to date with what's happening with the ADO? So we have a website and we're also on social media. Uh, We have um, a Facebook and um, Instagram accounts. So our Facebook page will probably be our most up-to-date site or page. We do also have a newsletter, just a sort of old-fashioned newsletter on our website, but that's a bit ad hoc. In other words, we just do that when we've got the volunteers with that kind, with those kind of skills and the time basically to, to do that. So can I just clarify, Tara, is the ADO completely staffed by volunteers? That's correct, yeah. So we're, we're all volunteers. We were lucky enough to get a little bit of funding last year uh, in 2022 uh, from the New South Wales government, I think from their 
sort of general, you know, post-COVID bucket. Mm -hmm. And we were able to take on a solicitor for about six months, uh, which was just fabulous. I think we took a solicitor on and also we had a little bit left over. So we also took on a research officer and that was amazing. Mm -hmm. But other than that, uh, we are all volunteers. Yeah. So is there information on the website for people that are interested in becoming volunteers? And is it something they would actually need to be a physical presence in the ADO office for or is this something that people can do remotely now? Or? Yes, we certainly are obviously welcome volunteers because we're, we're entirely run by volunteers. So yeah. without volunteers, we wouldn't exist. And at this stage, we're kind of uh, preferring face-to-face volunteers just because it's just much easier. So I'm the only full-time volunteer. So I'm the supervisor or the, the, the manager of the office. And so it's just much easier for me if I, if I can just have that sort of, you know, face-to-face uh, interaction with a volunteer. And I think the volunteers get a lot more out of it too, uh, being mm-hmm. in that office and just dealing with what, what comes in. And it's mm-hmm. just such a sort of varied uh, caseload that, you know, I'll have something prepared that I can work on with the volunteer. And then something comes up that day and it's just often a completely different direction Uh, and it just takes a lot more of my time if I have to uh, do that remotely while while we love remote volunteers and we certainly do have a little sort of cohort of remote volunteers we're just really limited in how many of those we can take on which is frustrating I know because we're based here in Canberra and you know, I know Canberra is not everybody's cup of tea, but um, <laughs> those of us who are here don't mind it. I was just going to say one thing I, I should have probably mentioned is that they don't have to have a legal background. Uh, we welcome volunteers with any background. Of course, anyone with a legal background is is um, uh, very welcome, but also uh, anyone with just that general interest in uh, animal law or just helping animals sort of through the law. Okay, that's wonderful. That's really good. So we're coming to the end of our time together today. And as has become tradition, what is the one thing you would like anyone who has a legal problem regarding an animal to know? Well, I'd just like to highlight that non-human animals matter to so many of us humans. So it is inevitable that we humans will have legal problems regarding animals. And so the ADO is here to help with those legal problems. We're here to help people help animals. So please don't hesitate to get in touch. That's wonderful. Thank you so much for joining us today, Tara, and for letting us shine the spotlight on the Animal Defenders Office. Thank you, Pauline, very much for having me. And if I could just give a a last comment a reminder that uh, we're here not only because animals matter in and of themselves, but your bond with animals matters. So people's bond with animals um, really matters. So if anything threatens an animal's well-being or a person's bond with their animal, we're here to help as much as we can as an unfunded service run by a small team of dedicated volunteers. And you can find us at www ado.org.au or you can send us an email at contact at ado.org.au or call us on 0428 416 857. So thank you Pauline for having me and we really appreciate the opportunity to speak to you and your listeners. It has been an absolute pleasure. That was our guest Tara Ward from the Animal Defenders Office. As always, you will find links to all the websites and resources mentioned in this episode listed in our show notes as well as a full transcript. Or you can email us to cle at legalaid.nsw.gov.au. This has been Spotlight On. Thank you for listening and goodbye, everyone.